This is the Wurlitzer 1550. It's the only jukebox that was ever made to play an intermix of 45 and 78 RPM records. Now you can see the difference between the 7 inch 45 with a 1.5 inch hole and a 10 inch 78 RPM with a quarter inch hole. And it's the difference in the two sizes of the holes that make this jukebox tell which is playing. And that's done by this right here. This is the turntable. And you can notice that it's got two sizes on it. It has the smaller size for the 78 and the larger size for the 45. And as it goes and moves up to the top here, and it had, rides on these two idler wheels, then it differs in the depth at which it raises. We're going to see that here in just a few moments. You can see that what then, and by that variance, this plate right here, you can see that there is actually two parts of this plate. The larger one is the one where it rides on the 45. That's this one right here. This one right here is where it rides on 78. So then simply by raising and lowering this, it changes the speed of the jukebox. And then it has an idler wheel that rides against that. So it's quite the interesting mechanical mechanism that changes the speeds. We're going to see that in operation here in just a moment. First, we'll run a 45. the actual turntable shaft is actually able to go up higher. I saw you there, just standing there. You may notice that it also knows if it's a 10 inch record or a 7 inch record. And that is managed by, once again, the same mechanism and the, the drop of this through a complicated series of mechanical linkages that tell it where the tone arms run. What tells it whether it's playing the B side, you can see the B side tone arm here, and it actually plays the record in reverse. That's accomplished by the motor. There's actually two, two motors stacked on top of one another. They're, one is reverse polarity. So simply by the, the pin selection for a B-side selection, it tells the jukebox which part of the motor it's going to run on, whether it's an A-side or a B-side. And the, the record literally turns in reverse. And then the bottom tone arm then engages with the record. So certainly a uh, complicated mechanism. There weren't that many of these made, and it's the only series. They call them a double stacker, as you can see, two stacks of records, 104 selections. And they made it that way simply to beat out the Seabird company that had come out just a couple years early with a 100 selection jukebox. So Wurlitzer wanted to play Can You Top That? Thank <laughs> you. 